Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am so excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 119. If you are new to this space, welcome. I am so excited to have you here. This is a show where we focus on mental health, growing our minds, working on growing a mind that is open to growth and learning and evolving and rewiring itself and focusing on how our inner child can really play a role in that through various categories and subjects. If you missed last week's episode number 118, it was one of my favorite episodes to record. It was all about, do the people in your life truly know what's best for you? That is a fire episode, a fire title. And honestly, something that we all need to contemplate for ourselves is, are the people in our life actually best for our future or were they the best for our past, which can be a hard conversation to have with ourselves. For today, as we continue on that self-awareness growth and on contemplation, today we are going to talk about one powerful question to get massive awareness. So as you guys know, or if you don't know, I am a coach. So I coach people one-on-one and my target and my goal as a coach is to help you guys evolve holistically, to focus on the things in your past that might be holding you back from that vision of yourself that you have in the future. We often all carry, or to some degree, carry a version of ourself that we aspire to become or aspire to be in some way, shape, or form, and that's going to look different for all of us. And so my goal as a coach is to work with folks on a holistic level to focus on all the avenues of your life that are pouring into that or taking away from that version of yourself that you are optimizing for. One thing that I like to do with my clients when I'm at a point where I'm like, hmm, what's to come next? Where do I guide them next? And so I'll self-contemplate for myself. And if ever I'm stuck on a place of not knowing where to go next, which rarely happens, but a fire question that I like to ask, fire meaning powerful, I need to stop using that word and use a different explanation word, a powerful question that we can ask, which is the goal of today's whole episode, is am I holistically maximizing my own unique potential? That is the question that I want you to ponder throughout today's whole episode, something I want to leave you guys with this week and something that you need to leave for yourself to contemplate for the rest of your life. We are so good at looking outwards for answers and to give us validation and to make us feel a certain type of way. However, if you have a growth mindset or you are trying your hardest to work on becoming as growth efficient as possible, likely why you're here, this question will likely resonate with you. Am I maximizing my own unique potential? The thing that I love about this question is it's going to be a different answer for all of us. You, how you scale what you view as your maximum potential is gonna look different than me. I'm going to look different than somebody else. And that's okay, that's why the word unique in there is so powerful. And if you're listening to that question and you're going, hmm, I don't really know. This is why self-awareness is one of my favorite things for us each to discover for ourselves. Because the only way to really answer this question is to raise our level of self-awareness. If we don't know the, the direction really in which we're going, it's hard to say if we're truly maximizing it. So that's why I think that this question 
is in a way a great starting place, but also a great question to ask yourself in your own unique areas of your life. And so further to asking this question, I like to break it down into categories, focusing on health, wealth, love, and life. In each of those categories, rating yourself on a scale of zero to 10. In health, how much am I maximizing my potential? For you, that might look different than me. So for health, that could be eating foods that you know are wholesome for you, moving your body every single day. That could be focusing on mental health. Health, all of these categories are gonna be what they mean to you. Then we move into wealth. What does that look like for you? Is that finishing schooling? Is that paying off debt? Is that working towards a new career? Is that building a business? Is that learning about finances? Love, is that self-love? Is that in a relationship? Is that with your family? Is that with your friends? Is that with the environment? Love, again, is a category in and of itself. And then life, how much in your life do you feel you're maximizing your potential? So once we've broken down those categories and we can kind of rate ourselves from a scale of zero to 10, that's when we get awareness and perspective to then be able to get to work. Because awareness is only half of the equation. If you truly want to maximize your life, you have to be willing to be honest with yourself, but then be willing to do something about it. Because if you say, you know, I'm about a two of what I think I could possibly do, but you're okay with that, you're okay with staying there and doing the same things, cool, that's fine. But if you have more of that growth mindset and you're like, I want to maximize my life, I want to maximize my talents, my skills, my ambition, I am ready to become the best version of myself, the action side of this is going to be everything. But I think it's important that we stop and we pivot at times in our life, especially when we're starting to feel like we're in a rut. This is a question that I like to ask when, to myself, whenever I feel like my confidence is off, whenever I feel like I'm not myself, I don't feel in alignment, I feel sadder than usual, I'll say, Jesse, are you maximizing your life right now? Have you become a little too go with the flow? Have you stopped grinding as much as you should be? That typically is what I correlate my confidence to, which is a whole episode I'm going to do either on Thursday or next week for you guys is what do you correlate your confidence to? Because I think that that's, again, it's going to look unique to all of us. But having awareness truly is everything and allows you to see which area is your lowest. It gives you a starting point. From there, What I'd like to do is I I like to identify the feeders and bleeders in each of those categories. Meaning, if we look at each of those, what is feeding into me maximizing my potential in health? And what is bleeding that? Meaning, what is taking away from that? AKA, eating junk food before bed, not exercising. Insert thing here for you. So there's really three parts to this. The first is to holistically ask yourself that question. Am I holistically maximizing my own unique potential? Boom. Great start. From there, backtrack. Let's work backwards. Let's break it into categories. Help, wealth, love, and life. Rate those as categories, 0 to 10. From there, in each category, write if it what your feeders are in that and what your bleeders are. From there, how can we begin to double down on the feeders and start to dwindle out the bleeders? Because the thing about the bleeders is they're typically things that are pleasurable in the moment but aren't long-term, AKA I'm using junk food and like doing those things because that's something we can all resonate with. Eating junk food is a bleeder because it's not pouring into our health goal, but it feels good in the moment. Those are typically the times that we need to have self-discipline. And the interesting thing about self-discipline is every time we say we're gonna do something and we do it even when we don't want to, ding, 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 that builds our confidence which also gives us energy in a way and gives us confidence, or sorry, gives us a new sense of self, right? When we feel good, we almost want to keep that feel good feeling. So we're, we get more resilient to want to do more. But if we've become okay and comfortable hanging out in those bleeder environments, meaning we've just become comfortable, it can be hard to start to incorporate new things. But I promise you, you guys, the more that you start to implement doing things that you don't want to do, but you know you should do, the better you're going to feel holistically as a person. I can definitely, you know, validate this for myself of there's been times in the last two weeks that I have struggled big time to show up for myself in fitness and in health in general. I've been struggling to cook proper meals. I've been doing it, but it's been hard to get there. 
to move my body has been harder, but I've been showing up. And I always thank myself so much more on the days that I don't want to, and I end up doing it anyways. Sometimes one of the best pieces of advice that I can have when we don't want to do something is to literally do a three, two, one. Three, two, one, let's get up, let's just do it. Once you have momentum and you're there, you kind of just want to finish through with it. And so identifying what your feeders and bleeders are is a really empowering way to just see, oh, it's oftentimes when I do all those feeders, or sorry, all those bleeders, I end up feeling like crap the next day. Oh, no wonder I don't feel like I'm maximizing my potential. I have way more bleeders in my life than I do feeders in my life. And so really all this is, is giving yourself awareness of where you're at and how that's tying into your growth right now as an individual, because it all comes down to the actions that we're taking today that are going to affect us long term. But if we kind of turn the blind eye and we take the back seat and we're not really bringing awareness to it, life is going to pass us by and we're going to wonder why we feel stagnant. Okay. And so I know that these questions can be hard to ask ourselves and I know self-awareness can be one of the hardest things, but it is also one of the most rewarding things when we practice it often and when we challenge it often. Our brain is a muscle. It likes to be worked. It likes to be challenged. It likes to think differently and have new perspectives and to, and to be out of a routine in a way. And so the more that we can consciously give ourselves that, the more our brain is actually going to learn to catch up with us and to do the same for you in return. But as we know, we have to be the ones that consciously put in the action. Our brain and our body aren't going to put the action in for us. That is our responsibility. But think about how much more your future self will thank your present self for taking action and for doing the things even when you don't want to, even when you don't feel like it. And asking ourselves those hard questions also allows us to take control of our life. I know exactly what it's like to not know where to turn, to feel alone, helpless, and stuck. My goal as a coach is to help clients from a trauma-informed perspective see your worth and develop self-belief so you may chase your dreams and trust your intuition to live the most aligned, fulfilling life possible. If you're looking to elevate your life to the next level but aren't sure where to start, I would absolutely love to connect. If you're feeling pulled or curious, please use the link in the show notes below to book your free call. I look forward to connecting and supporting you on your own unique journey. It really gives us two options. It can allow us to take control of our life or we can hold on to that duality of what does this mean for me if I don't do this? What is the contrast? What is the other side of that coin? Because once you have awareness, that then really comes down to you to make the decisions. And when we know that there's options and one that will serve us better than the other, it empowers us in a way to want to choose the better road or the more efficient road for us. But if we don't even take that time to reflect for ourselves, which I think is why a lot of us don't, right? We avoid self-awareness because if we get that awareness and we get this realization, then we have to make a choice. So by avoiding it, we're not faced with those mirrors. We're not faced with the counter side of what that can mean for self. So the fact that you are here and you are listening and you are tuning in and hopefully reflecting for yourself, you now have those two options. You can go back to doing the same things that are no longer serving you Or you can take this and run with this and grow with it and know that it's going to be uncomfortable, know that it's going to be hard, but know that it's the more rewarding path to take. That is the thing. The things that are often hardest in life are the things that we will thank ourselves for because most people don't choose them. One thing I always tell my clients and something I want to tell you guys, because if you are listeners of the show, you are likely the same. Growth and wanting to become a better version of yourself is more rare than you can ever imagine. Trying to grow a self-improvement podcast in 2022 to 2023 is excruciatingly hard because facing truths and facing ourselves is super hard. And if we're surrounded by people that also aren't doing the same, hello, we have permission to stick with them and to go with the flow of the people that are around us. That's why I'm so passionate about looking at your circle, especially if you have a growth paradigm or if you are someone who wants to grow. Are the people around around you that you surround yourself with in a way forcing you to go back to an older version of yourself? When you're in certain places, do you feel like you're growing and in other places you feel like you're drawing back? Awareness is everything, again, you guys. And if you are wanting to evolve, know that it is kind of lonely, you know? 
trying to work on improving yourself isn't the coolest thing in the world. From my perspective, it is. Like, come sit at my table, we can have a conversation for hours. However, what I'm realizing is to the general public, it is not. Seeing as only 20% of people actually set goals and only around 4% of that 20% actually achieve them, shows me that setting goals is already rare and following through with them is even more rare. The reason for that is kind of the goal of today's episode because we're not asking ourselves powerful questions. We're not eliminating the, the bleeders out of our life. We're not removing the things that aren't serving us and optimizing us. And one thing that I've realized and that I needed to realize is that not everybody wants to grow. And that's something that I wish I would have realized a little sooner is because from my perspective, I'm like, how can you not want to become the best version of yourself? And in retrospect, now I kind of realize why. It's because it's extremely challenging, but I also recognize that the only potential that I want to leave on the table is, or sorry, I don't want to leave any potential on the table. Knowing what my gifts are and my talents are and my passions are, to me, it's a disservice for myself to leave any of that on the table. However, if you haven't even validated that for yourself, that you you own and have your own unique gifts and abilities, it's going to be really hard to want to take action because staying stagnant is the easy road, right? It's the more fulfilling road short term in a way because you're comfortable. It's safe. There's no risks to be had. There's no contemplation to be had. It's a lot easier. And so I get that. But so I want you to know that if you are contemplating this question for yourself, if you are on a growth paradigm and on a growth journey and you're wanting to become the best version of yourself, I want to just thank you for that because it is rare and it is a hard thing to do, okay? And so I want you to just know that here in this space, you are not alone in that. That is my goal here is to welcome. And I'm fumbling a little bit with my words today, I noticed, and I think that's because I've just had so many new realizations today and I just got off the microphone or sorry I just got off a coaching call with my coach and I had a lot of new awarenesses and I recognize that whenever that happens I go in my mind a lot and so today's episode was a little you know miscued I think that that's what it is is when we're trying to hold so much duality in our mind at the same time and we're contemplating a lot it can be hard to communicate that and one thing that I'm working on is effective communication for both myself as well as for you guys I want to be able to produce and to share with you guys the best content around self-improvement, around a growth mindset, around mental health and pertaining to growing and how you can go from having dealt with severe mental health issues to turning that into a beautiful, powerful, I guess almost superpower in a way to optimize your life. But I do truly think so much of growth starts with contemplation. It starts with asking yourself hard questions and being gentle with yourself with what the answer is while also trying to challenge yourself, challenging yourself and what those answers are. If you ask yourself this question, how much am I holistically maximizing my own unique potential and you do not like the answer, truth is, if we were all honest with ourselves, none of us would truly like the answer if you had a growth mindset. From my perspective, my number of zero to 10 of how much I'm maximizing my own unique potential, honestly is around a five. Compared to what I know, I am fully capable. If I were to put everything in, no excuses, fully send it, I'm at like a five. And so I want you to just be genuinely honest with yourself, knowing that nobody has to know your number, nobody has to hear that number, but if you were to brutally rate yourself, that is where to start. Don't set the bar high and so that you don't chase it. If you're like, oh, I'm like an eight, You're likely not actually an eight. We're likely lower than we would ever rate ourselves. And again, that's why self-awareness is huge. But be brutally honest with yourself. Sorry, if you're watching video, I just caught my hair on my earring. Be brutally honest with yourself because the only person that you're lying to and that you are misguiding is self. Be gentle with the answer, but know that it is never too late to execute. It is never too late to start to do the work and to start improving yourself. I think we live in a false world where we think after school, we stop learning. We think once we've got a job, we're done. And I think that that is the mindset that has been ingrained in us systemically. However, growing never ends. Your potential never has to be capped, nor should it, except for I know the reason for that again is because choosing to go the opposite way and doing the work is the harder route to take. But I hope you guys take today's episode, you take today's question, 
you backtrack it, you get honest with yourself and just sit and notice what comes up and focus on one area at a time. Look at the one that's the lowest, if it's health, if it's wealth, if it's love, it's, if it's life, look on the one that's the lowest and then focus on its bleeder specifically. So one category at a time, one bleeder at a time. How can you either lessen your time doing that, pivot it, heal it, bring awareness to it, because once you start to bring awareness to stuff and you have that, again, that duality, that opposite side, something to compare it to, it becomes a lot harder to go back to the things you know aren't serving you. So I truly hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, another self, I guess, contemplation episode, if you will. If you guys are looking for support with any of this, as always, I have a link below to book a free 30 minute call. That is my role, that is my job, that is what I'm doing is I'm helping people uncover what these blocks are in their life that is stopping you guys from achieving your own unique potential. It took a coach to help me get there and I want to be that coach for you guys as well to help guide you on your own unique perspective and know that again, it is a unique journey and I will walk with you on your own unique journey and help maximize your life in your own unique way through the things that I've learned and through my experiences. So thank you guys so, so much as always. All the love. I look forward to chatting with you all on Thursday. Bye you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.